Very cozy. Well, this is the man behind the mask. Huh? Yeah. Now you look more familiar. <laughs> I'm more at ease now. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I can hear myself. What? Oh, this is quite loud. No. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but then I, at the same time also, you know, like it just sounded a bit over the top, lah. It was just more of a yeah, it's just funny. Then I just changed it to my uh, my actual name. So just to sound a bit more legit. <laughs> what have you? Uh, wow, Boon Cat. Are we, are, we, are we ready to roll? By the way, we are ready to roll. We're ready to roll. Okay. Are I'm we just... live? Yeah, we are pretty okay, much. Man. So wow, to everyone who's watching <laughs> and uh, yeah, subscribe yeah. by the way. Yeah, subscribe <laughs> definitely. Yeah, uh, we've got Boon Kian who is a national cyclist uh, for Singapore. By the way, when he came into the room, the studio. Dude, I don't know if the camera can pick up, right? But this guy is the Hulk of cycling, man. His veins is just popping up all the way. But anyway, thank you so much for coming. No worries, my pleasure. Um, to those who don't know who you are, it's a shame if they don't know who you are. But uh, if you could just give us a quick introduction of yourself. Wow, um, this feels like a job interview. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, my name is Bunkiet. I am uh, 35 this year. I'm a... Uh, Father of a 15-month-year-old boy um, and a, a passionate cyclist. Wow. So I've been doing this for about 15 years, mm. uh, riding bikes, uh, racing maybe, uh, I would say, oh, I'm, I'm a few old now, maybe just a bit above a decade. Wow. Yeah, so I had a bit, you know, I started out and then I, I, I had a bit of a break in between when I came back to Singapore. I was based in Melbourne for a while studying uh, and that's when I really picked up on my passion of racing. Uh, mm. Let's learn, learn the craft there almost. Um, and then when I came back to Singapore, ooh, it's okay. People, I hope they are subscribed. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. So then when I came back to Singapore, I, I had a bit of a, a hiatus in racing, but then got a bit too fat and unfit, and had too much competitive energy to burn, uh, which would you know, which if taken elsewhere, I think would get me in trouble a little bit. So <laughs> got me on the bike, and then uh, yeah, and then you know, just started racing from then on and this is where I am. I'm, I'm so excited to be interviewing a national cyclist. I, I interviewed Riyadh uh, uh, some time ago. He was a very he's interesting a good dude, as yeah. well. Yeah. Good friend. Uh, you know Riyadh, right? He, yeah. he races with you guys. Yeah, I love that guy. He's a, he's a, he's a really good guy and uh, yeah, I think we are both embarking on this uh, this SEA Games campaign. Uh, he's he's training hard and he's, uh, you know, going all out for it and, you know, there should, there should be no other way and uh, yeah, we'll be in the trenches together, so looking forward to yeah. it. And, and I was actually very pressured by time because uh, Boonkat was telling me, what time will, will we be done? Because uh, I need to train <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> so, like, Sorry, I uh, have a day job, so I'll try to come in as quickly as possible. So Sorry, I'm a bit of prima donna, <laughs> but no, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. What, what, uh, so many questions. Um, you know, you said that you were in Melbourne studying, so I'm assuming you're not doing this full-time, or how, how does it work? Yeah, well, so actually my actual job, I mean, I'm doing this full-time now, uh, as part of my journey, uh, uh, as, part, you know, as part of my journey towards the SEA Games campaign, um, I, you know, to kind of like uh, give you a bit of context, I actually stopped. I work as a podiatrist normally. I still actually work as a podiatrist full, uh, part-time now, but I quit my full-time job as a podiatrist uh, in February this year, uh, last year. Uh, so as to train, you know, and dedicate time towards uh, getting fit for the SEA Games um, uh, in May last year. Uh, and that SEA Games w uh, was in Vietnam and it was postponed from August, uh, uh, sorry, October in 2021. Um, and yeah, so basically I, I quit that, uh, I quit my job and trained two and a half months uh, for, for the SEA Games uh, in Vietnam last year. And then um, came very close to winning gold twice. Oh. Uh, and that, that lit, lit a fire in me and I decided that I had to give another shot. Right. Uh, so I decided to extend my uh, career, my podiatry career hiatus, and uh, train full time towards this year's Sea Games, which is also happening in May, Cambodia. Mm. Um, if I may, let's take it all the way back. How did cycling first start for you, and how do you find the passion, or how do you know that cycling is for you? Yeah, wow. I mean, uh, I, as a young boy, I used to love riding bikes. You know, I would, uh, you know, like everyone, even now, you know, like you get a sense of freedom and the sense of independence as a young kid you know just jumping on bikes and you know exploring the neighborhood and going around the block and you know going down a small hill and you're like wow you know this is the best thing on earth so i think as a young boy i always loved riding bikes uh but then if you had to put a probably a, a start point in this whole s cycling racing you know uh, uh, journey uh i think it's really started when i was uh with a couple of friends in ns and we you know obviously got paid in ns and we had a bit of money and 
and maybe towards the tail end of my NS, you're a bit more free time, so we said, oh, you know, let's go and get some bikes and, you know, uh, and, you know, the road bikes were like, you know, cool and you can go fast and you know, it's just, it's just, just that, always that bug of like going fast and, you know, that wind in your hair and, you know, so I don't think it really disappears no matter what stage you pick up your bike, right? So then we, um, we got road bikes uh, each and then we decided to go out riding together. Uh, funnily enough, I'm the only one that's still riding. Uh, <laughs> the the f- three or four other boys actually uh, have actually stopped. Uh, mostly in part actually due to like close shaves with uh, traffic mm. and, and crashes. Uh, but I was be, um, fortunate enough to, to be able to uh, go to Melbourne to, to pursue my studies uh, uh, in a degree, degree of podiatry. Uh, and that's where actually I think the racing part really um, took off, you know, because uh, in Australia, you know, Australia is one of, one of the big nations in cycling. They're producing, you know, top, uh, top level pros uh, year in, year out now. Um, and, and it all starts from the grassroots uh, where, where you can basically pay 15 bucks uh, a pop, you know, uh, and do a, a weekly night crit, you know, and, and these are all metro, you know, within the metropolitan area. So you can, it's, you know, people like you just basically finish work and then go do a crit and then and, and go home. And, and, and you know, if you, you pay $15 for entry, but then if you win, you win 70 bucks in price money. Mm. And there's, there's, there's a barbecue, uh, sausage, sausage sizzle, mm. uh, uh, um, you know, then, then so you just, you know, finish a race, pop a, pop a snack and mm. then uh, go home. So it was really fun. And then, um, uh, and that's how I, I, I started. You know, I, I, I so someone, I was riding with a, with a bunch of guys and obviously, also in Australia, the, the environment, you know, you know, because of more open land, you know, uh, more challenging terrain, you know, cycling becomes a bit uh, more um, uh, interesting, so to speak. Yeah? And then uh, and, and, and I, I joined a group, right? And they said, oh, you know, you should pick up this, uh, you should do some racing, do some criterion racing, actually. Um, uh, you know, tomorrow night at, uh, at Q Boulevard, you know, in Melbourne. And, and I said, oh, let's go, I'll give it a shot. You know, so I... I turned up and then they said, oh, you know, you have to start from the bottom because you, you're a new rider, so you have to start at C grade. And then, you know, that's how it works. You know, you do well in C grade, you place, and then the next week you do it in B grade. And, and you know, after that, you, you place in B grade and you go up to A grade and A grade's, you know, uh, the, 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 the top grade uh, within the club level. And then obviously the state races uh, and then national races. So I booked myself, you know, that's what, so when I, I, when, I, when I jumped on and, uh, and did a C-grade race, I, I, you know, that was when, you know, I, I caught the bug and, and, you know, just wanted to keep improving, you know. Every week I'm just like trying to do better and better and better and soon I was, you know, up, up in A-grade and then uh, just loving the, 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 the thrill of racing. How old were you when this started? So I, I think I was, I started racing, I would suppose if you asked me when I started racing proper when I first did my criteria race, I was... Um, at in C grade, I was probably 22, mm. so not a, not a not a young not a you know not a spring chicken line. Like, <laughs> co- you know, yeah, co- comparatively to to how how to the boys these days, you know, and, mm. and even like you look across the board with uh, with you know with, with cyclists uh, when they when they start actually being competitive. Right. So you started off doing all these small little crits in uh, Australia, and then you yep. slowly move up the rank. Is that how it works? So you got onto A, you call it A grade, right? Yeah, A grade. Then, so I, I went up to A grade and then, um, and then obviously there was the, so, so that's the criterion racing. And then obviously when you do uh, road racing, so, they, so on the weekend, you know, we would, um, you know, uh, drive out to the country and then and there will be uh, clubs holding their own road races, so mostly around circuits. And it, it works the same way there. Um, and there was also, you know, uh, me trying to rise through the ranks and I obviously got better and better as, 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 I, as I went. Uh, and those were, I, if I look back, you know, those were really the, the formative years of my racing experience because that was basically like what I knew bike, bike riding almost was about. You know, it's just, in Australia, the, 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 in, especially in Melbourne, you know, it's like, for example, like a typical road race would be like, you know, windy, five degrees, you know, uh, rain going sideways and you know you are just like chomping in your <laughs> on your handlebars trying to stay you know trying to stay with the guys in front of you um and and you know i suppose you know, to put it any uh, to put it uh, simply like this you know you get hard almost you know doing that <laughs> yeah you know so 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 that's why I, that's what i knew bike bike riding was you know so and obviously if you got you know as you race you know guys and then you 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 all go out, you know, driving out into the into the country on the weekend for three hours to do a race, and then you know get lunch and ride home and talk about the race. So it becomes like super fun. Yeah, yeah. So then I did the club racing, and then I think the 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 break the the I had a little bit of a a, a break in in terms of uh, um, my uh, 
my, the, my rise, I suppose, uh, if you put it that way, when I actually won a, um, a tour called a Tour of Bright, uh, in B grade actually, uh, but uh, the Tour of Bright is this, is this really popular um, race that goes, you know, that, that happens within this area called Bright in, in, in Victoria. And, and this, this is a town in the Alpine region. So it's a three stage race and you, you know, do a, do, and basically there are big climbs. Mm. So the last, the, the, on the final day, the climb is a horse cat climb. And somehow I, I managed to win the B grade uh, uh, um, uh, category of that, of that race, right. which was quite uh, unexpected because I'm quite a big guy, but uh, I managed to get into the break on, on the first day, in the, on the first stage. And, and basically, uh, you know, four of us stayed away and I, and I, I won the first stage. It was a mountain top finish. Yeah. And I managed to, you know, uh, I was quite fit at that point. Uh, and I managed to actually like somehow, you know, win by a fairly big margin. I think maybe about two minutes mm. uh, on that stage, and then the time trial was on the second day, and I, you know, defended my time trial. Um, I defended my lead, and I think I went into the last day with uh, a minute and a half or something, and then, uh, you know, and just suffered all my way, uh, suffered my way to uh, to the top of the of the, of the big climb, yeah. uh, and and somehow won. What 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 was I mean yeah thanks for that man but what was your very first bike that you owned I mean you were studying yeah, well, all these crits yeah <laughs> so so actually uh, the very first bike I bought with my friends was a um, Merida aluminium bike it was just size fifty two way too small for me mm. um, you're a tall guy you're one ninety one eighty six one eighty six yeah, yeah. Uh, and I ride a fifty six mm. uh, frame so I was riding a fifty two. You know, getting back pain and you know, and and and, and kind of thought like, yeah, I kind of kind thinking that this is what cycling is. You know, you got to suffer. You know, mm. but actually it was just a wrong, wrongly sized bike. And then obviously once you you know start riding, you get to know people, and then they, they realize, hey, the bike, this bike is too small for you. So then I, then uh, upgraded to a specialized Pro, which is one level above the, the they call it Tarmac, not S Works in the uh, back then. Mm. Specialized Pro SL two, mm. and that was the bike I actually started racing on. Uh, yeah, and then and then, if you want to know what I wrote after that, I think I wrote a, uh, I wrote the bike. Actually, the bike had, and I had many many memories of the bike. So I won the tour of bike on that bike, and then I was then uh, roped into a, a national C, national road series team, uh, which is a, a, a team that competes on the um, the national road series of, series of Australia, and they were a continental team, a continental yeah. registration. So then obviously there were sponsorships, right? So then I wrote the first uh, version of the Venge then. And then uh, that was on the first year, and then the second year there uh, was a giant TCR. Uh, and then after that, I stopped racing, and so I went back to my old specialized Pro SL2. This is a trip down memory lane. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, what happens? Uh, then I wrote this Chinese OEM. Mm. After I wrote the Chinese OEM, I wrote a SL6. Then uh, Focus is our Comex for the 2019 Sea Games campaign. Mm. And then I wrote, after that, I had to return the bike, actually. Bikes and Bikes were sponsored me, that frame, loaned me, actually, not sponsored me. And then I uh, then went on to the Factor O2, mm. the first version, then went to the Factor O2, um, the mo uh, second version. I think they have a new version now um, for the O2. And then... This one. This, this Austro. The, the Peach Austro and then this Austro. Oh, wow. Uh, so you said the Peach and then this one. Yes. This one is a very unique one. It's a Singapore themed frame. Uh, it's not Singapore. Yeah, Singapore themed frame. Not, not a Singapore team. Like, you know. Yeah, 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 team, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think there are only 13 frames. Uh, and, and, uh, this is for the squad, right? Yeah, uh, no, no. This is actually uh, on retail. Oh, it is? Yeah, so RS Cycle is actually, uh, uh, which is a distributor for, and, and my sponsors for, for my, my bike um, uh, of the Factor Bikes. They actually uh, collaborated with Factor to do a Singapore unique Singapore version frame, uh, and and there are only thirteen um, of these frames around in Singapore. Right. Yeah. Um. So you said you had a peach one, mm. and and why from the peach and then it was this one? Is it because of the color? Yeah, because of the color. Yeah. Of the color, yeah. Okay. Correct, yeah. Uh, tell us more about this bike, man. What what how what's the setup here that you have? Is it all uh, dictated by the sponsor, or do you get to choose parts? How does it work? Uh. Well. You know, it's not difficult to uh, say say no to the uh, to the parts when you get all the best parts from my sponsor. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm I'm very fortunate that they uh, and privileged actually that they, they support me so well and they you know give me the, the best equipment uh, that 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 I I'm I'm very very thankful for. Uh, so I I'm on a Dura Ace um, Di2 group set um, with uh, uh, with a 5440 chainring. Um, Handlebars are black ink, uh, 42, 130 stem. Uh, factor also frame, obviously. 
uh, and then black ink 60 wheels. Um, I, I also have a 45, black ink 45 uh, we, uh, set of views, uh, but I thought you know the deeper views would look better on mm. camera, so I brought, mm. I, I, I brought the 60. <laughs> so you have a few set of views, only this one and the other one. And the 45. Just, yeah. just two. Yeah. And okay, wow, I don't even know where to start. So you know, when I saw this picture <laughs> on Instagram, right, the first thing I noticed was that the, the bike is slammed all the way already. So uh, I'm going to assume you guys all have bike, were bike fitted. Yeah, so I I uh, was I was bike fitted and actually I was supposed to go on a on an even lower stem. So uh, the, they want the bike fitter wanted me to go on a minus fifteen stem, mm. but due to you know uh, manufacturing requirements, it was only a minus six, and I don't think you can get any uh, any integrated bars with a minus fifteen mm. stem. So I I was you know then I, I suppose I was limited uh, to to that setup. Right. Yeah. And this is a fifty six, right? Fifty six. Wow, uh, but th the funny thing is, right? You don't have the. Uh, it is pretty bling, but OSPW is missing. You don't have the three D printed saddle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, my saddle is pretty personal, actually. Um, you can see the saddle is actually pretty. It's not even carbon. No, uh, no. It's, yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty banged up as well. Because you know, <laughs> over the years, I think I I went there actually get this saddle. He's been through, been through a lot with me, lah. So and it's very personal. Um, so it's very hard to just jump on. A, a saddle and, and find the right one you know you have to really I suppose trial and you spend so much time on the saddle uh, so if it's inbroken don't fix it yeah which it's a specialised saddle right specialised power saddle yeah power mentioned. saddle yeah. and um, how, 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 do you, how do you find this frame this setup for you how's the bike you know, overall yeah I mean hand on heart it's the best bike I've ever ridden mm. yeah um, and if I had to compare or wait, this, is an, this is an arrow frame like an all round arrow frame um, and I would say the thing that really stood out to me when I jumped from the because the previous bike was in, was in O2 and then I jumped on this bike the thing that really stood out for me was that uh, how fast it how easily it picked up from, a, from speeds above 40k an hour like um, there's a big I don't want to big but a significant difference uh, you know especially when you're following an attack right and then you know you, are, you, are, you, know, uh, you have to jump from 40, 40 to and you know you have to go up to like 45 or 50 uh, this bike just wants to like you know it, it, it's just a lot less resistance mm. and it makes sense I mean because the, the tubes are tapered and you know the, if you the O2 had a more traditional rounded frame so it's more it's not as, 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 as slippery yeah uh, but this one you know obviously slices through the air a lot a lot more yeah uh, you said you own um, uh, an OEM Chinese frame before right yeah do you think this bike looks like one of the uh, not OEM but the one of the Chinese frames called Seca? <laughs> so actually, I was forced to look it up because when I was um, going, I, t I told some friends I was going on this show, and then uh, one of my friends, uh, Caleb, uh, he, you know, he might have asked you a question, uh, but he was like, "Oh, you need to know about Seca because he's going to ask you about Seca." <laughs> so I had to go and look up what Seca is, and, and honestly, I had no idea like what what Seca was or like you know, I even heard of the brand uh, before. But it does look a lot like an Ostro, uh, mm. you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I've never ridden it, so I, I can't really say, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's a decent bike. Yeah. Yeah. How, how heavy is the bike? Uh, 7.8. Mm. Would you think you'd be better with rim brakes? I mean, you, you've, you've ridden for some time. Uh, what do you think about, you know, rim and then now bikes are all going disc? For me, this, this for sure. Uh, subjectively, I feel more confident with disc, especially if I'm a heavier guy. Uh, and you're going down descents, right? You, I mean, the, I need more stopping power because I'm like, you know, I, I pick up speed a lot, a lot quicker. So the disc made me, uh, the disc is a lot easier uh, and gives me, gives me a lot more confidence with braking. Uh, but also the modulation is just like, it, um, it's unbeatable with, uh, with, with disc, man. I, I, I've raced in the wet with, with carbon rims and I tell you, like, <laughs> sort myself many times, yeah. man. Like you grip it and then, it, you know, it takes a while to bite and then when it bites, it suddenly bites, you know, and mm. then, you, you know, and, and basically like, yeah, man. So like now on this, you know, you are you 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 don't have this issue anymore. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, a lot of it comes down to like the rider ability. But for me personally, uh, this is definitely a, a clear a, a clear yes for me. Yeah, uh, we've got a lot of interesting questions uh, when I posted the IG story. Yeah, um, we'll get to that. But I just got one a couple more questions for you. Sure, of course. Um, how how often do you train, and how's the training schedule like for you? Yeah, wow. So uh, now that I'm doing it full time, uh, I am doing doing about twenty five to thirty hours a week of training, uh, both on and off the bike. So the on the bike stuff is obviously on the bike, and then off the bike it's just mostly work in the gym. Uh, so my current training um, routine uh, is I'm on the bike every day, doing obviously various workouts, uh, 
And and uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I, I go to the gym uh, and lift weights and look silly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is uh, pretty much, like you said, right? Full time, man. Like, Yeah, you, I mean, you, you have to. I mean, like, uh, if... You know, cycling is, 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 is a bike racing is a competitive sport. It's, it's a yeah. hard sport. Uh, you need to. It's, in, it's endurance in nature, but at the same time, you have to. You know, be able to like, you know, sprint and you know time trial. You know, so it's, you basically if you look look at it physiologically. You have to basically, you know, do a lot of other things. So it, it's very time intensive, mm-hmm. um, and and there's no way if you want to compete at at at, at, uh, at a high level, you need to. You just, you just have to do it full time uh. yeah and how important is equipment for you in terms of like having a, a, a pretty fast bike or is it all down to the rider that's a good question um, definitely equipment plays a part uh, I I think you know I'm fortunate I'm, I'm on Austro fac- uh, Factor Austro and I think that personally for me like I can't go better I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this as a sponsor's plug but in the sense that like I think at the top level all the bikes are more or less the same um, in the sense that there may be a difference but I think the difference is so minute that rider ability trumps, trumps you know that difference in, in equipment uh, and that's why uh, uh, you know you don't see like for example like uh, Pogacha you know like if he if I, I can tell you that if he you know rides a, a different bike uh, you know just for the sake of an example like a, like a Scott Foil he would, he, would, he would still be like, you know, top three or even like win the Tour de France. And if you give like Pogacar's Conalgo to like the fifth place rider in the Tour de France, he wouldn't, he wouldn't win because the rider ability still mm. uh, takes precedence on, on the perf- ultimate performance of, 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 the, of the rider. And is going to the gym very vital uh, in terms of your getting your performance up there? Uh, yeah, so I think the gym is probably the high hanging fruit. Yeah, so if you're looking at improving your performance on the bike, you know, low hanging fruits obviously just spending more time on the bike, and then if you can, if you really, you know, try to, you really maximize maximize that, and you want to like find a f- an, another edge in performance, then I suppose the gym is, uh, you know, getting more strength and more power uh, mm. is 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 the way to go. Right. Uh, maybe I'll move on to more the more interesting questions. I sure. my, my questions are quite boring and very no, standard no, no. format. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, the, one of the questions I guess this is uh, from your friend. Um, if you want to see, he has a picture here. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is a deja vu uh, <laughs> picture. So his uh, question in relation to the picture is secret to your weight loss from uh, his first time at nationals in 2012. Yeah, look pretty pudgy there, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that over the years. No, that was actually, it, the, the kit I'm wearing is actually the, the kit of my NRS team, mm-hmm. um, the uh, African Wildlife Safaris team. Actually, I, I like the kit. It's you know like a big line on the front, and they were actually a luxury tour sponsor, so it's one of my favorite kits. As you know, really stands out. Uh, by the time I think you know, as a young racer, you don't really know what you're doing. You know, but you also don't really know. Uh, so How old were you again in that, that luxury? In I think I was 24, 25. 24, okay. Yeah. So obviously you train hard, but then also you don't really watch your diet, uh, and across the years. In tandem with you know uh, sports science and nutrition, uh, um, uh, the fe- the research in, in that area improving, um, you know you learn more about your body and how and what to eat and how to actually maintain your weight and you know and, and hence uh, you know try to, you always try to optimize um, you know your nutrition and nutrition is super important as as a as a cyclist as a bike racer actually, uh, you know I, I like to use the example you know you are, if you you know think you are a V60 engine you wanna Feed it, feed it high octane fuel, and not dump some uh, cheap petrol in there. Mm. So, uh, so I think in part it's also you know uh, better nutrition, better knowledge about myself. Do you have a nutritionist? We work with nutritionists uh, uh, it, 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 with the Sports SG um, uh, setup. Uh, the one the li- the lady I work with is her name's Olivia. Shout out to her. Mm. Uh, yeah, so she helps me with uh, with my nutrition um, uh, needs and uh, not only just you know. I suppose day to day race weight, but also like you know what kind of supplements that you should take. You know how to like yeah, just really optimize your, your body because your body is essentially the, the engine of uh, of the bike. And if you want to go fast, you gotta get a big engine and make sure the engine is working well. Do you give yourself cheat days? I do, uh, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I, I I'm like a normal human being. You, know? you I, don't I, look normal, man. No, no, no. I, I, I am. I'm. I, you know, I have my cravings <laughs> and stuff. But you just gotta be sensible, lah. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is that like, you know that 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 the fitter you are. The faster you ride the, your bike, the harder you go, and which means the more calories you burn. But because of that, the less likely you are to eat 
crap food, mm. which, which actually, if you think about it, that's when you, are, you can actually allow yourself to eat crap food because the calorie uh, uh, you know, uh, deficiency when you train hard is, is, is quite big, so you can actually eat, eat junk, right? But mm. you don't. Mm. But then when you switch off and you, know, you, don't, you don't train hard, then that's when you're like, oh, let go, right? Then you can eat all this crap food. So it's almost like a double whammy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the ironies I always think about. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, when I'm on my off season, when I'm not riding or whatever, yeah. I, I, that's when I allow myself to eat crap food <laughs> and then I you know, put on weight really quickly or whatever. And actually, if you you know, after a while, if you don't eat like crap food, right, then you mm. start eating crap food, right, you know, quite, quite constantly, you sh- your gut actually don't feel good, yeah. you don't feel good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, man, but yeah, I, I, I do give myself cheat days and I, I just try to be sensible. Is uh, it a very general. high carb diet for you? High sugar, high carb? Yeah, so actually carbs are super important uh, as a bike racer because like, you know, the intensity, uh, when you go hard, you're, you're, you know, a lot of your, your intensity, uh, your your fuel um, needs are, are come come from carbohydrate sources, you know, uh, in, in your muscle glycogen, muscle glycogen. Uh, so the way you need to replenish it and make sure you are always staying on top of, of your carbohydrate needs, mm. uh, both on and off the bike. Mm. Yeah. So taking enough carbohydrates on the bike and off the bike is, is super important. Wow. And you want to take good good carbs, uh, So like off the bike, you're looking at uh, more more whole grains, you know, uh, brown rice, you know, sweet potato yeah. and stuff. Uh, but in, in the race, you know, being able to eat enough carbs is also one thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next question is, uh, you've, you've already said that you've moved on to a, this is your full time, so you no longer do, uh, you know, do this part time, right? I sh- uh, actually, I'm st- still working part time. I actually work this week, you know, so I, I, I work, uh, I, 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 yeah, so I'm doing this, but majority of my time is taken up by, by training. Uh. Yeah. So a lot of people ask, like, how do you juggle this? Like, you know, having to work and then do this, full, uh, you know, train professionally. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, now obviously it's easier because in, in in that regard because I don't uh, have a full full time job, uh, but I suppose if you you know like uh, when I was still working full time, I was doing about like fourteen ten to fourteen hours a week. You know, still still I I I used to ride to work and then ride home. So that actually it's a two birds kill one stone kind of approach because you you know cut out the commute and you also get to ride your bike. And on the weekend you do on the weekend you do longer rides, yeah. Mm. Um, do you still play table table tennis? <laughs> you play table tennis? I used to, I used to, yeah. <laughs> I, and, uh, I actually played to like combined school levels. Oh. And I was uh, to to JC, and then uh, I I actually stopped uh, table tennis after when you know when I finished my JC. But I used to play table tennis. Would you think you have turned pro for table tennis? No, or? no, no, <laughs> no chance, no chance. Yeah. What was your cycling journey like? How how do you go pro? Okay, so. The disclaimer in that is that I'm not pro because I don't receive a wage for it. Uh, I suppose if you look at the strict definition of a, of a professional, that's when you actually receive a wage for your given you know, job. And I'm not a pro because I don't have a, have a professional team and I don't actually receive a wage per se. Um, but I suppose if the question, you know, the angle is that, you know, how do you then you know, reach a level where you, you know, can compete at a, at a fairly high enough level then I suppose the answer to that is that you I mean yeah just l- love riding a bike ride it hard and, and believe in yourself mm. I think I think that's I think uh, that's, that's, that's something that's uh, important I think uh, uh, if if you want to do something whether it is you know uh, pursuing a job or if you've, you've got a goal I think you need to back yourself and mm. and, 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 and you know Tell yourself you can, you can, you can give. You want to give it a shot, and not not regret it, and and go go in for it, and and see where it takes you. How long do you think you'll be doing this for? Like full time. Yeah, like cycling. I mean, I mean, this kind of um, pro sport, right? There is a lifetime to it, right? Because you get younger people who come up the ranks yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Not only to cycling. I mean, every other sport. Yeah, um, I suppose my immediate target is the Sea Games, and then we'll see what happens after that. Mm. Uh, yeah. So you know. Uh, Physical, physical performance aside, I think actually in cycling now, you know, like uh, one, of, one of the, you know, the big name riders, Valverde, I'm not sure you, 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 you know him well, but he's, he retired at 41 or 42. Hmm. So I think uh, also with the advancement, advancement of sports science, I think it's allowing riders to prolong their careers because, you know, you, you can take care of your body a lot better. Uh, so physically, I, you know, if I want, I think that if I really, if you look at that, I, I can probably continue I'm 35 this year I can probably continue for at least a couple of years but you know obviously there's, there's more uh, there, there are more considerations to that mm. um, but you know like I said the immediate uh, targets to see games this year right any regrets about your cycling career 
Regrets. Maybe uh, because you're like so deep into it now, there's like, you know, I, I, I can't quit, right? I've got to go full oh, gas on this. Oh, no, man. I'm loving it, man. Like, uh, I'm, lo- yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm enjoying the journey a lot. You know, I think uh, it's something that if I didn't do it, I'll, I'll re- I will actually regret it. Mm. Um, and I'm very fortunate that, that, you know, I have a super like supportive wife who's incredible uh, it, in many ways, uh, supporting me in this. Uh, and she, you know, and, and she supports me because, like, if uh, she, you know, she says if, and and I and I fully agree. If I don't do it, I would definitely look back and regret. Mm. So, uh, you know, just to make the make the most out of it and and see where this takes me. I think it's very important to have a supportive family oh. partner. Just like my wife who's behind the camera. Oh. She's like supporting me doing all this Excellent. crap even after. Wow. Okay, <laughs> you and I, we, we and my mom. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You know exactly what I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know, we, 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 you know, we, without, without my wife, there's no way I would do this. La. Is she a cyclist? No, she doesn't cycle. Have you tried of getting, trying to get her to cycling? Yeah, when uh, she, we, when we, yeah, in the early days, we used to ride on, on more bikes. Mm. I know those like awful bikes and stuff mm. just around the block, but I, uh, but I think she's a bit scared skittish with the, the traffic la. so yeah. I think she she, 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 does, she uh, you know yeah and I think I you know I don't you want, don't to, want her to get onto yeah I don't want to get a, you put it in an uncomfortable situation and sometimes you know you 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 experience and you know like mm. a close shave right and you're like man if like you yeah. know if, if my, my wife for example has to go through that, that, that I wouldn't be comfortable with that mm. uh, recently you just got a new sponsor right 100% I did actually, yeah. So this is uh, the new glasses, the holo wow. holo frame glasses, yeah. So I'm, yeah, hundred percent supporting me with my eyewear. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of jerseys do you guys have? Uh, so actually, this is my, this is uh my personal kit. Uh, so the this 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 uh company logos is a logistics company, and he's uh the the CEO of the company is a good friend of mine. Um, and you know he, uh, I, I used to wear just wear his kit. You know he gives me kit, and I just wear it um, before, like you know, uh, bef- yeah, bef- uh, all, you know, uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, but the reason why it's got a Singapore flag on it is because uh, if you win the national, ch- if you win the national championships uh, of any given country, and you're considered a national champion, uh, you have the privilege of wearing the, f- the flag on your on your kit. Mm. So when I did win the national champion uh, ships this year, I uh, last last year uh, the first Singaporean, um, he printed the, uh, the the Singapore flag on it. Right. Yeah. And this is by Kuo, right? Uh, Corey. Yeah. Corey. Yeah. Corey. Pronounced Corey. Yeah. And the bibs as well. Yes. Okay. It looks super fit, man. Like I mean, like it fits you super tight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like I like I like Corey, the Corey stuff actually. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Okay. Next question is: What's your FTP and what's per kilo? <laughs> um, sensitive question No I'm kidding uh, <laughs> Last time I tested My FTP Was I, I don't know about it now uh, Because I just came back You know I was a bit sick uh, Over the past two weeks uh, But the last time I tested Was 386 mm. watts I think, And I think that, that brings me to 386 divided by 81 What is that? That's bad, man. Yeah, maybe like just under five or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> this is a funny one. Well, seeing a podiatrist like you, uh, example you, make a big difference to my cycling experience. <laughs> uh, well, if you've got a foot problem and you can't, can't actually pedal, then seeing a podiatrist <laughs> will definitely help your, 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 your foot problem and hence you were able to ride your bike better. Uh, but in general, probably not. Like, yeah, mm. pedaling, pedaling more and pedaling harder and pedaling more consistently would probably get you, make you a better cyclist. How important is a bike fit? Oh, very important actually. Yeah, so. This is a plug for Gary, weekend bike fitter. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, come see Gary. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you. A bike fit is Im- definitely important, you know, if uh, actually the, lo- the more you spend time on your bike, the more important the bike fit becomes. Uh, mm. Both, you know, to, for comfort and also uh, biomechanically so that you can put out more power. Um, and, you know, it's probably one of the low hanging fruits if you ask me. Yeah. Just get, in- you know, instead of like shelling out three grand on a new set of views, you know, spend, uh, you know, a quarter of that on a bike fit and it will take you, take you further and make you faster. I've never gone for a bike fit. <laughs> Maybe you should see Gary hop over after this. <laughs> but um, for, for a weekend casual cyclist, is it important? Like, I only ride like twice a week, man. Yeah, I think, I mean, it depends on how, how you, how, what your fit is like. Uh, mm. You know, if there's something glaring, you know, just going for a bike fit can vastly improve your, your, your cycling experience. So I would say at least go for like a basic fit. So you yep. don't actually, your knees are not pointing out as you pedal and you're not like, you know, your, your back is not like, like hunched, you know, and then your hands are not going numb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why no OSPW and any plans of getting an OSPW? Thoughts about that? Well, I think if the OS, I think that 
the OSPW, like I said, uh, with equipment, provides a difference, but I don't think it's that, I don't think it provides that big a significant difference. I mm. mean, if not, then why 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 isn't Pogachar using it or like Ineos is riding it? You know what I mean? They are yeah. all in Shimano parts, but they, you don't see them using it. Mm. And these teams are chasing like you know every single percentage. So I think if it was, it made a significant enough difference. I think they would use it. Mm. But it looks bling lah. So yeah, if if uh, if I get the chance to use it, then <laughs> sure. If not, then I'll just pedal harder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to all the newer cyclists out there, what's your advice for them if they want to improve? Yeah. So I think um, first, you know, love riding a bike. I'm sure that, you know if you jump on your bike, you love cycling to some degree. Uh, but I think the enjoyment must be there. That's the most important thing. Um, secondly, I think that uh, being more consistent in your bike would, would make a big difference. So instead of like riding, you know, doing one four hour ride on, on a weekend, if you do maybe two ride, two rides during the week, and you know, uh, one and a half hours and one and a half hours, and then maybe bump it up you know, four and a half hours in total, and another hour and a half. On the weekend, that would you know improve your 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 cycling on the whole because your the body is um, built in a way that where like you know where if it receives uh, st- stress you know in uh, physical stress through you know exercise uh, consistently you know mm. you actually get uh, you actually get fit a lot quicker. Mm. Um, just looking at the setup of your bike, the the saddle to bar drop is just insane. How pain is your hands and back from a scale of one to ten? Not not much at all because I I go on for a bike fit. Uh, <laughs> but is it no? Is it that insane? I think I think I've seen crazier crazier saddle to. Uh, I to, mean, to it looks drop. like a definitely when I look at it, it's a, it belongs to a pro la. <laughs> I, I mean, I have, a, I have long arms la. Yeah, yeah, but but no, I mean it's uh yeah. I mean, I get around okay. It's okay for me. Mm. Yeah. Any plans to join a continental or pro team? Yeah, so I I've received uh a, an offer or two. Um, uh, last year, uh, but because of my timeline and you know and, and and a few other factors which I wouldn't wouldn't go into, like it didn't really work out for me. And I think that uh, the Singapore National uh, Cycling Federation setup uh, is 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 has has been very good, uh, which I I feel that in the lead up to the Sea Games, which is my immediate goal, uh, would give me ample opportunities to. Um, Reach the level that I want. I want to to get to get to. So I I was you know happy to go on that path. Mm. Um, but you know being being a, a pro ride, pro bike rider it's a, it's a tough life la. You know in in a sense I mean riding is one thing, but the other thing is spending a lot of time away from home. Yeah. Uh, and obviously if you join a, a professional team, you're obligated by contract, which means that at least for the full calendar year you are are, are um, obligated towards the, the 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 team, and you know you if they call you up. You know, over Christmas to go for a race, you have to go and you have to miss. Mm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of sacrifices. A lot of sacrifices. Yeah. So mm. you know, it's not to say that um, that that's not the, that's, I suppose if if you said if you ask me what's the most difficult part of being the best bike rider that I can, I would say it's the time you have to spend away from home. Mm. Um, is Adrian as scary as a coach as he <laughs> seems? <laughs> he asked that question himself. Uh, no, this from someone else. Oh, yeah. No, I mean Adrian has a. Adrian's a good guy. I get I get along well with him. He's got a bit of a RBF. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me to, to elaborate on what that is. If you know, you know. Uh, but he's a good guy. He's a good guy. I think he he demands a lot from his athletes as 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 um as as you, as a coach should. But also at the same time, if as an athlete, if you have to be pushed along, then you're probably not the right athlete. Mm. You know, you, you should be an athlete, if you are, if you should, you should be an athlete where you are. You know, he's got to hold you back and. And not have to motivate you, but he's more of guiding you. And I think if if you find him scary because he's got to, I suppose, push you along, then you know you have to look internally. Mm. Um, how many pairs of sunglasses do you have now? <laughs> well, hundred percent has has given me a few pairs. I think uh, I have oh, six pairs of hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. And, uh, different models or different models. Uh, so this is the S three. Uh, so I have a pair of Hypercrafts, a pair of uh, Speed, two pairs of Speedcrafts, uh, and a, a, a pair of Casuals. Uh, am I missing anything there? I can't, can't, can't remember now. Which is your go-to? Uh, so far, actually, I quite like the... It's between the Hypercraft... Uh, no, the sp- Speedcraft. Mm. The Speedcraft and the S... 
three, this this pair. Mm. Yeah, because it's it's like super light. Um, the speedcraft is super light. Uh, but I I'm really impressed by the coverage of the of the lenses. Yeah. Uh, and also the ventilation. You know, for something that the lenses for for the lenses being so white, like the ventilation is is actually really good. Um, and and you know the clarity of the lenses is, is you know is 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 bar none. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying wearing wearing them and yeah. Thanks to them. <laughs> Last two questions. Uh, I know we've still got a bit of more work to be done uh, later on for Beatles. Sure, sure, uh, yeah. uh, next one is, uh, this is a silly question, but have you crashed before? <laughs> if so, what's your worst crash? Oh, have I crashed before? Like, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the sunrise <laughs> from the east. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I've crashed. Like, look at, look at my legs. You know, just, my hands are full of sc- oh, scars. You know, like, uh, as, as, a, yeah, as a bike racer, you definitely crash. Some, you know, obviously, because sometimes, you know, you're, your fate is not in, not in your own hands, you know. Someone crashes in front of you, you know, you know where to go, but go over the top of them, right? Um, but so yeah, you, and you look at my bike, you know, there's scratch marks. Uh, even on this setup, I, I crashed. The most recent crash I had was in uh, Chiang Mai in October last year. Um, touched the wheel in front of me. It was totally my fault, um, and and I just kind of like thought I could save it, but then lost control of my bike, and then um, and then you know crashed. Um, so it's part it's part of how bad was the crash? I uh, just had some skin off, not too bad. Okay. Any uh, broken bones? Before? No, I, I've touched wood, never yeah. bro- broken any bones. Uh, but my worst crash is where I have to get stitches. So I, uh, I had one, actually, I, I, I had cuts on my face twice, uh, both once in 2019 and once in 2012. Hmm. Um, and I, I basically just like landed on my face. La. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, 2019 was actually around uh, was a, was was one of the sports up criteriums. Mm. It's going around the roundabout, and I had a sp- speed wobble. I s- you know, like just literally the bike just was like possessed and like I lost <laughs> control of it. Yeah. So I I think what happened was that, um, basically that that race uh, because it was like a that that that, that race moment was quite weird because it was a heat and then a final. So after the heat, I actually. Um, was a bit you know trying to be a bit of a smart leg and try try to bunny hop the curb and then basically hit one of the hit a um, hit the curb basically on yep. the side and then slash my tire wall mm. uh, and then I basically patched it with a with a cardboard um, uh, piece of uh, uh, a cut, piece of cardboard you know just as a, uh, on the side wall and mm. then I just like pumped it up and went to race and then obviously I was banking super hard on the bike coming around that roundabout and then basically I think because of that the bike. The walls of the the tire wasn't stable and you know started to wobble. Because and of the patch, right? Yeah, because of the patch exactly. Mm. And then I I just lost control of my bike. And then the next thing I knew, I was landing. I landed on my face and oh, I had to get like it. stitches at unboxing. I have stitches here. Uh, probably not as bad as yours. Um, yeah. The worst thing about stitches is removing them, not putting them on. To me, anyway. Y- yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's not pleasant. Uh, the, the worst, actually, the worst, the worst uh, part of crashing is 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 actually you know the abrasions on your hands, because mm. you know you uh, you use your hands so much, right? So whenever you you got and and when you have like abrasions on your hands, you basically have to like, you know, you want to wash your wash your hands or wash your face or whatever. You know, your your hands get wet and you know obviously yeah. the 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 wounds sting. And then as as long as you move your hands, you know it's the it stretches the skin and you know it starts to sting again. But but looking from your tan lines, you look like you don't wear gloves. I don't wear gloves, and my tan lines aren't as sharp as like yeah. what you would think. Because I I. I typically uh, roll up my sleeves, oh. and and I, I you know I'll get you I'll get laughed at by by my friends, but I, I ride without socks sometimes. What really? Yeah, I mean like I don't <laughs> I don't look silly with tan lines, <laughs> you know like weird. No, like, but that's where you look pro, right? You having the tan lines. <laughs> you yeah, you look pro, but you look still look like you know silly like, Yeah, you know. Wait, so you don't wear socks sometimes? You don't wear socks? Yeah, like on like a like a short recovery ride. I I, I just so don't just wear barefooted socks. on on shoes. Yeah. But that's weird. That's re- I, I can't even just get my head around that. <laughs> yeah, as in what? Just having a yeah, like just not have, wearing any socks, right? It feels weird, doesn't it? Uh, and the fit is a bit off. Little bit, little bit. But you know, this is a short ride. Uh, yeah. I, I won't, I won't rock up the race without socks. You know, probably get thrown out. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but just to avoid the ten lines. Even on the ten lines, actually, yeah. I, I just wear, I just don't wear socks. Mm. Yeah. Uh, last question for the day. Sure. What is your favorite route in Singapore, and where do you train? Well, uh, so in s- I train uh, during the week. I do a lot of loops around. Depending on obviously depending on my on my, on my session, like what I have to do for, my, for my session. Uh, like if I have to do like a, 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 an endurance ride where I have to stay on the pedals um, a lot, then I'll go up and down Changi Coast Road, which is, isn't the most exciting thing, but that's that's the that's the best we have. Um, and then uh, I but I like I ride around crunch I like and I ride around crunchy a lot. 
continuity. Mm. I just do like various loops and then NTU and then like out to uh, Jalan Leka and you know let's do back on uh, back on back upon myself and you know just spend a lot of time you know just just out out there you know solo rides are these solo rides or groups Mo- it, during the week mostly solo, solo rides yeah actually all solo rides uh, uh, unless yeah unless yeah I, I do mostly solo rides because you know if you want to train you got to push win you know mm, so don't you gotta, draft don't be like me I'm just drafting people. I'm getting <laughs> high average speed as, as long as you enjoy it yeah but, but for me because I have to hit a certain uh, uh, target you know uh, power and a target certain target uh, aim for my, my session then I have to you know pu- you know get the resistance right push win so mm. uh, I, I, I ride uh, alone or in a small group most of the time do you do indoor training? no I, know. I, 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 I just don't I don't even own a turbo <laughs> uh, I, I don't really enjoy it I know now the Zwift and all these uh, yeah, yeah. indoor um, uh, workout uh, platforms but I just yeah I just I just ride right on the road you know mm. even if it rains I'll just you know as long as it's not crazy I'll just, just go out yeah uh, that's all I have and, and thank you so much for coming again onto the show no worries my it's pleasure it's really been uh, a pleasure to have you here very exciting to uh, interview I, I like interviewing people like you guys man. Oh, I, man I learned so much even though I probably will not take anything home <laughs> I just don't have the time to write but uh, uh, give it up for Boonkin everyone thanks guys thank, thank you, you so much thank you thank you thanks, thanks for having me